سلام 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 Muslim living in any part of the world, he is our brother. We should feel for him. Muslims are suffering. Muslims are butchered. Muslims are slain. And some of us even, they don't feel, they don't cry over that. So what is the brotherhood? If one organ is in pain, the whole body feels that. Whether he's in India, whether he's in Far East, whether he's wherever the Muslim is, he is my brother. I should feel for him. All praises due to Allah. I welcome you all to this evening's program of Peace Vision of Islam. We have Sheikh Salim Al Amri from UAE. The topic which Sheikh Salim Al Amri will be talking to you today is on brotherhood. So now without wasting much time, I would like to introduce Sheikh Salim Al Amri UAE. He is a, a well-known speaker who has been giving talks in UK and parts of Middle East. He has learned his Islam under the students of Sheikh Nasiruddin Al Albani. Now I request Brother Sheikh Salim Al Amri to deliver his speech. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hdiuhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Innahu man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah. Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ أَمَّا بَعَدْ Brothers and sisters in Islam Our topic for tonight is Brotherhood Al-Ukhuwa Brotherhood in Islam The Ummah lacks today Brotherhood When we know that Brotherhood is very, very essential in our life Without actualizing and achieving real Brotherhood in our life our situation as Muslims will never change. For that reason, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he migrated from Mecca to Medina, the first thing he emphasized upon is the formation of brotherhood. To the extent that something happened in the history of the Arabs, which would never have happened before that a man offers his wife can you believe this can you believe a man comes to you and tells you I have two wives choose one of them I will divorce her and you marry her this can never happen but it happened when the brotherhood was achieved actualized in the life of the companions when the immigrants arrived in Medina the Prophet ﷺ said every Ansar should take one of the Muhajirin every 
one of the supporter of the Ansar should have one of the Muhajireen, one of the immigrants. And he formed brotherhood between them. And they were called brothers. And the supporters, the Ansar, they were very generous. This is one of them saying to Abdurrahman ibn Auf. He said to him, I have two wives. First of all, I will give you half of my wealth. I'll divide my wealth into two halves, one for you, one for me. Second thing, I have two wives. I divorce one of them, so you choose. Abdurrahman Auf said, may Allah bless your wealth and your wives. I don't want anything. Just show me the way to the market. I am successful businessman. I know. Just show me the way. And just in a few days, he got married. He went to the market. He bought and sold, buying and selling. He made money and he got married immediately. So brotherhood, brothers and sisters, what we lack as Muslims. Brotherhood is the cornerstone in our life. Muslims, they don't lack material resources. The land of Islam is the richest land. We have, as Muslim Ummah, everything. We don't need anything. Everything we have. But what we lack is brotherhood unity that's what muslim ummah lacks and the sahaba our forefathers they realized the importance of this so they were together in the battle of badr mus'ab ibn umair he passed, and he saw his real brother, brother, blood ties, mother and father. But he was with the mushriks. Listen to this. He was with the mushriks, came to fight the Muslims, and he was arrested. So he passed by him, and he said to the Muslim, who was handcuffing his real brother, he said, brother, make the handcuff tighter and tighter. Tight him well. So he said, brother, I am your brother. And this is what you are telling him? Instead of telling him, be kind to me, you are telling him, be tough on me? He said, you are not my brother. He is my brother. The brotherhood in Islam is based on the belief, on the belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is brotherhood. Muslim living in any part of the world, he is our brother. We should feel for him. Muslims are suffering. Muslims are butchered. Muslims are slain. And some of us even, they don't feel, they don't cry over that. So where is the brotherhood? Where is the brotherhood? Didn't Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said that the parable, the similitude of the brotherhood among the Muslims, like the organs of the body, if one organ is in pain, the whole body feels that. If your toe is, have, there is a wound cut, the whole body feels is in agony, in pain. This beautiful parable the Prophet Sallallahu coined to depict and portray the brotherhood among Muslims. Just like one body. Whether he's in India, whether he's in Pakistan, whether he's in the Far East, whether he's in the East, wherever the Muslim is, he is my brother. I should feel for him. That is brotherhood. So, when the Muslims lost the concept and the brotherhood is not there in their life anymore. What happened? 
what is happening to us now. And that is exactly what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said. He said, the nations are about to invite one another. The nations are about to invite one another and come upon you just as the eating invite others to their dish. Someone asked, will that because we are few in number that day? The answer, no. At that time, you will be numerous. But you will be froth, scum, carried by torrent. And Allah will remove the fear from the hearts of the, your enemies, and Allah will indeed throw the weakness, the wahan, into your hearts. How many of us take for granted we go to Jannah? What's the possibility that we go to Jannah with no punishment at all? I want to know for me, Siraj Wahaj, I want to know what are my chances. I want to go to Jannah. You have more taqwa than me, you have more knowledge of Quran than me, no uh, more Arabic than me, no history to me, than me, more eloquent than me. I will lie, I believe most of you. Better than me, much better than me. What are your chances? Get it? Muhammad Al Jibali. The best of words or the best speech are the words of Allah. The best of guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet's mission Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is to explain the Quran to us and to teach us how to practice it, how to live by it. His manner, his character was basically the Quran. So he is advising his companions that after me, be careful. Don't fight for power. Keep the word of the Ummah together. And this is part of the teachings of Islam. They said, what is wahan, weakness? Said the wahan is the love of the dunya and hatred for death. So one of the Sahaba said, oh Prophet of Allah, will that happen to us Muslims because we are minority? Said, no, 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 no. You are not minority, you will be great in number. You will be like the foam, the froth, the scum. You have no weight. Why we don't have any weight? Because we have no unity. All of you know the story of the old man, old wise man. When he was dying, he says to his children, come. And he gave to the eldest a stick. He said, break it. He broke it. Gave it to the second, he did the same thing. The last, he did the same thing, easily breaking the, the stick. Then he put the sticks together and he said to the first, break them. Mm, I can't. Second, I cannot. He said, if you remain together, you will be like the bundle. And if you separate, then you will be easily broken. It is logic, it's very simple. So the Prophet ﷺ said, no, that will not happen to you because you are less in number. You are so many. Your number is great. And Allah will remove from the hearts of your enemies, respecting you, fearing you, giving you any value, considering you. And Allah also will put in your hearts wahan, weakness. He said, what is wahan? He said, you love the dunya more than the akhirah. And you hate to die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ This ayah, which is ayah 103 in Surah Al-Imran, Surah 3, 103. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds, he reminds here the Muslims, the believers about his favor, the blessing that he gave them. And he's actually reminding Ansar in particular. The commentators in the books of Tasfiyat of Seed, they say Allah is reminding the Ansar because they were two tribes, Aus and Khazraj. So Allah is reminding them, He's telling them, وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا O Muslims, hold fast to the robe of Allah. What is the robe of Allah? The book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu So hold to the robe of Allah, all of you together. وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا You should not divide among yourselves. And remember, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ and remember the blessings and the bounties of Allah, which He bestowed on you. If kuntum a'da'an, you were a'da, foes, enemies to one another. The Ansar before, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu called them Ansar. Before they were called Aus and Khazri. And you would be surprised, Aus and Khazri, they were cousins, cousins. And they were fighting one another. Cousins, two tribes. Islam formed the brotherhood between them. So Allah is telling them, remember that you were enemies, you were fighting one another, you were on the verge, on the brim, on the edge of hellfire. And Allah brought you out, brought you back, saved you from falling into the hellfire. وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى Shafa means the, the verge, the edge. عَلَى شَفَى hufra. A pit of hellfire. فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا But Allah saved you. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِ Such Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains His ayat and His signs and He reminds you that you may ponder, reflect, guide it. And in another place in the same surah, surah 3, Ali Imran 105, He is threatening us. Allah is warning the Muslims. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Just listen to what Allah, Allah is threatening the Muslims, warning them. And be not as those who divided and differed among themselves, after the clear proofs had come to them. It is they for whom there is an awful punishment or torment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you should not be like other nations that they were divided. You should remain together. We are in the masjid. We come from the masjid, you don't smile. You pass by me, no salam. We were in the same row. Next to one another. Why? The Prophet Sallallahu said, if you don't straighten your line in the Salah, listen to this hadith. You straighten your lines and you stand shoulder to shoulder and no gaps between you and your brother. Otherwise, Allah will turn your hearts against one another. Now, in the Salah, you stand in the Salah. And there are gaps between every musalli. One musalli, gaps. Maybe like this. Muslim, another gap. And if you try to say to him, reduce the gap, mm -mm, I don't want, I don't want to, to, to be next to you. Why? Because there is no affinity. There is no attachment. There is no love in our hearts for one another. There's no love. Imam Mullah Ali Qari, one of the leading scholars in the Ahnaf school, Imam Mullah Ali Qari said, اختلفت قلوب المسلمين عندما اختلفت صفوفهم في الصلاة. Allah Akbar. This is the fiqh. He said, the hearts of Muslims chained when the rows of the Salah chained. When they were not straightening and standing next to one another, 
Allah turned their hearts against one another. Not only this, the Prophet ﷺ said in the Salah, any gap between two Musalli, there is a gap, Shaitan will be there. So, Muslim, who's next to him? Muslim, Shaitan, in between. Muslim, Shaitan. Imagine the shayateen they found place between us so let us close and don't give room to the shaitan you know the prophet sallam, this is another hadith it's not related that he, he said when you enter your house you say salamu alaikum the shaitan says oh i cannot stay tonight in this house then the food, they brought the food and say, Bismillah, my goodness. No shelter tonight and no food tonight. That's what the shaitan says. We said, he said, when you entered, Salaamu Alaikum. They brought the food, Bismillah. But if you enter your house and you kick the door, so in the absence of the father, kids are playing, feeling happy. Now they hear you. They say, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming kids imagine the kids your children are afraid of you so you kick the door with your leg and you entered no salamu alaikum no salamu alaikum where's the food where's the dinner what a few minutes a few not ready you scream lying fury subhanallah and she puts the food no bismillah huh? No, Bismillah. You entered the house. No, Salaamu Alaikum. Shaitan say, well done. There is shelter for tonight. Because he didn't say, Salaamu Alaikum. And now, no, Bismillah. MashaAllah. Dinner and shelter. What else do you want? The Prophet Sallallahu is teaching us that the shayateen will be there in the Salah between every two Musallis. And this Imam, Mullah Ali Al-Qari, he said, the hearts of Muslims turned against one another when these gaps were created. He took that from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us, brothers and sisters, that we should not divide. And brotherhood between Muslims will remain. Even if they kill one another, they are still brothers. Allah said, وَإِنْ طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلُحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا If two groups of mu'mineen fight one another, form reconciliation among them. So in spite of, despite the fighting, Muslims are killing one another, they are still brothers. They are still brothers. That will not make them kafirs. Because the Quran said they are mu'min, though they are fighting one another, but they are mu'min. So the brotherhood will remain even if we kill one another. Imagine. Aspects of brotherhood or and ways, how can we strengthen this brotherhood? How we make it strong? Say for instance here there is a hadith which is in Bukhari. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا لا يحل لمسلم أن يهجر أخا فوق ثلاثة أيام. And before I elaborate on this hadith, there's another hadith which is in Sahih al-Jamع, authentic hadith, authenticated by Sheikh Albani رحمه الله. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, ما تحابثنان في الله ثم افترقا إلا بذنب يحدثه أحدهما. I want every brother and sister tonight to reflect on this hadith. He said, you will never find two brothers or two sisters that they loved one another for the sake of Allah. They loved one another for the sake of Allah. And then all of a sudden, they started hating one another. We were together, loving one another for the sake of Allah. And overnight, you started hating me and I start backbiting you, slandering you. What is going on here? The Prophet ﷺ said, that will never happen unless one of them, of the two, 
commits a sin. One of them disobeys Allah. And when we read this hadith, I read this hadith. And this brother now, he doesn't like me anymore. I say to myself, he's the one who committed the sin, not me. I don't accuse myself. I say, he is the one who committed the sin. I say always like this. I don't say like this. Brothers and sisters tonight, we don't want like this, we want like this. We should start blaming ourselves. And we should start analyzing ourselves. It's high time to face ourselves, not to blame others. The Prophet said, one of them committed a sin, disobeyed Allah. That all Muslims believe in the one and same Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All Muslims believe in the final and same messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Quran, it is the last revelation of Allah. Allah himself said, right, I'll take care of preserving it myself. I would not entrust it to anyone. Dr. Jamal Badavi. A day when no wealth or children would be of any help except those who come to Allah with a clean heart. Because after all, we came from the dust and to dust we are returning. What is your duty to yourself is written in the Quran. What is your duty towards your parent is duty in, is written in the Quran. What is your responsibility between you and the Prophet is in the Quran. What is the response between you and fellow mankind is in the Quran. Everything is written in the Quran. Hussein it is a sin for all Muslims who do not share the Quran with your friend who are not yet Muslim. <laughs> One of the Salaf, Sahaba, Kiram, he had the same problem with one of his brothers. He said, one month, I stand up whole night praying, most of the night making tahajjud, praying for him. Oh Allah, bring us together. Oh Allah, bring us together. Oh Allah, unite our hearts upon the truth. Oh Allah, unite the hearts of the Muslims upon the truth. Amen. One month, he was praying for his brother. Do we do this, brothers and sisters? Do we pray for our brothers? Do we ask Allah? Do we get up at night and cry and say, Oh Allah, guide our brothers? No. Few of us maybe. The majority, they do the opposite. You know, he went astray. He went astray. He went wrong. He diverted. He, he, he. So we are helping the shaitan. And we are pushing him to go further and further. The Prophet ﷺ gave one parable, one hadith. He said a horse ran away from its owner, horse. So the people are chasing the horse. And the horse is running, afraid. People are chasing the horse, so the horse is running away. The owner came and said, I know how to bring my horse. So he took a huh, bundle of grass and showed the grass to the horse. The horse came back. What we are doing now? We are taking the grass or the whips? Okay? Do we take grass or we are chasing the horse with the whip? Tell me. The whip. How he will come back? Change the strategy. Change the attitude. Cry to Allah. Cry to Allah. Allah is the one. The Sahaba, when they went to Persia, they passed by old man, Persian, Parsi. And they were talking through the translator, the interpreter, and they found him a wise man. Very wise. So they started telling him, why don't you become a Muslim? He said, the key not with me. The key of what? The key of my heart not with me. So immediately the commander of the Muslims said to the Muslims, I'm going to pray to Allah. Raise your hands. And he started, oh Allah, guide him. Oh Allah, open his heart to the truth. And this wise man started crying. 
Yeah, Sheikh, go on, go on. I start feeling that the key is moving. I start feeling my heart is opening. And, and Allah opened the heart of this Parsi. It's Allah who opens the heart. It's Allah who brings the people back. So, so this hadith says, do not hate one another. This is what the hadith, Sahih Imam Bukhari. Do not hate. A Muslim will never hate another Muslim. Why should I? Why should I hate him? I should cry for him. I should feel pity for him. I should have rahma. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as in Surah Al Kahf, Allah said, "فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ عَلَى آثَارِهِمْ إِلَّا مِنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسْفَعَ." Oh Muhammad, why are you killing yourself? Because they didn't accept the truth. Prophet Muhammad was killing himself, crying one night, one night. He prayed the whole night, and he was repeating only one ayah: "In to abdibhum fa innum ibadum, wa in taqfur lahum fa inna ka antal azizul hakim." If you punish them, they are your servants. And you forgive them, you are the Almighty, always. Repeating the ayah and crying, repeating and crying. Do we cry? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was crying for Muslims. Tell me, or for non-Muslims? For non-Muslims, he was crying. And you say that you love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you're following his sunnah. This is his sunnah. Crying for the mushriks, for the hidayah of the mushriks. Do not hate one another, and do not desert and forsake one another. And O oh Allah's worshippers, be brothers, be brothers. Lo, no, it's not permissible for any Muslim, any Muslim, to desert, not to talk to his brother Muslim for more than three days. It is sin, haram. That you cut relation with a Muslim, or you don't talk to a Muslim for more than three days. Even if he's mistaken, after three days, the Hadith also says, "Wa khayruhum aladhi yabda bil salam," and the best among them is the one who starts addressing the other and gives salam. He is mistaken, yes, but I will say salam alaikum. This is what Islam is teaching us. Muhammadur Rasulullah wa aladina maa. أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم. محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and those with him they are severe against those who are arrogant, those who are rejecting the truth. The Quran described them. They are deaf, dumb, blind. They don't want to hear the truth. You show him the way. This is the way. Deaf. They don't say the truth, and they don't want to see the truth. What can I do for them? The key is with Allah, not with us. We only pray that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala one day will open their hearts. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying in Surah Al-Fatih, that is Surah 48, Ayat 29, Muhammad Rasulullah, Allah's Messenger, and those with him are tough. Or upon whom? Those who are rejecting the truth. But those who are seeking the truth, they are kind to them. Ruhama ubainahum, and they are kind to one another. Ruhama ubainahum. Among themselves, they are very kind. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And see, I'll just give a few examples. Hadith in Sahih Imam Bukhari, the Prophet said, Inni لا أدخل في الصلاة أريد إطالتها فأسمعك صياح الصبي فأتجوز. which means the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said I start my prayers with the intention of prolonging it. the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would start the salah and his niyyah is to make the salah what long to prolong the salah. then I hear a child crying because women, huh? 
they pray the Isha with the Prophet ﷺ in the masjid. Because women, they can't go to the masjid. That's why he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, You should not stop the servants, female servants of Allah from going to the masjid. So the Sahabiyya, they were praying in the masjid with the Prophet Sallallahu And the children are crying. So the Prophet Sallallahu he feels pity for them. So he says, he makes the salah short, lest the mother lose concentration. Because if her child is crying, she will not be able to concentrate. This is the rahma of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu I mentioned this in one of the talks. He was, when he was giving the khutbah in the masjid, there was no mimbar, pulpit. So there was a piece of wood trunk of a tree. So he ne stands next to it. And then when they built the mimbar, he left that piece of, of tr the trunk. The first khutbah, he started giving it from on top of the mimbar. The trunk started crying in the masjid. Crying! Everyone in the masjid heard the cry of the trunk because it missed the Prophet The trunk loves the Prophet because he's rahmah. Till the Prophet came down and hugged, hugged the trunk like a baby. And the trunk kept quiet. Can you imagine this? About the rahmah of the Prophet he was traveling with his companions and then he saw a bird this bird was flying in front of him behind him to the left side so he realized he said someone among you did something to this bird they said yes we took the chicks the little ones of this bird so the bird came only to prophet muhammad and he said give the chicks back to the mother that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi My name is Farid Zakhna. I am Zikra Naik. My name is Rushta Naik. You are the best of people. My life and my death are all for Allah, sustainer of the world. Watch Little Wonders at their best in The Wonder Kids every Thursday at 8 p.m. UK and 9 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Brahma is called the Greater. If you translate into Arabic, it means Khalik. And the most appropriate method of understanding any religion is to try and understand the authentic sources, the authentic scriptures of that religion. Prophecy of Palki Autar, the last and final messenger, befits no one but Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And if you read the Vedas, it is similar to the Islamic concept that you come in this world once and next life, depending upon your deeds, next world you either go to hell or heaven similarities between Hinduism and Islam in Truth Exposed. Islam is still spreading because it is not the religion of paper. Islam is a way of life. Words of warning. On the day of judgment, every human being is vulnerable to be touched by hellfire. Abdullah Hakim Quick. Men have rights over women, but women also have rights over men. Mamdu Muhammad. We should remember what have we prepared for that day of judgment. Reminder, every Thursday at 11.30 p.m. UK and 12.30 a.m. Europe on Peace TV. So he said, I start the prayers with the intention of prolonging it. Then I hear a child crying, so I shout in it, lest his mother loses her concentration in the prayer. One day he was giving the khutbah, and then Al-Hassan or al Hussein came, a child falling down. The Prophet Sallallahu he left the mimbar, he left the khutbah, he came down and he picked the child. And he climbed the mimbar with the child and he was giving the khutbah. The Prophet Sallallahu was carrying his granddaughter 
and he was praying, carrying the child in the salah and praying. And when he wants to make ruku', he puts the child. Standing from the ruku', carrying the child. Going to the suit, put the child. That's what he was doing. And from this hadith, the scholars deduce that mothers can pray while carrying their children. Her child is crying, she can carry her child and pray. No problem. And one day the Prophet ﷺ went to the sujood and one of his grandchildren, grandsons, Hassan or Hussein, sat on his back. Child, the Prophet ﷺ is in the ruku, sujood, the child sat on his back. And the Prophet ﷺ prolonged the sujood, made it very long. So one of the Sahaba raised his head. What happened? So he saw the child sitting. Then the child got off and the Prophet ﷺ stood up. The Prophet ﷺ, after that, he said to the Sahaba, you are wondering why I prolonged it, right? They said, yes. He said, my grandson took me for a ride. He rode me. Huh? He mounted me. And I don't want to spoil his mood. And he's, in, he's, he's having fun. I don't want to spoil his mood. Can you imagine? This is the Rahmah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umar ibn Khattab, you know Umar ibn Khattab, Umar Farooq. If Umar Farooq is walking in this street, the shaitan will from Umar. This is known. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And one of the governors of Umar ibn Khattab came from Iraq, went to the house of Umar, and he found Umar walking on four. You know, on four, hands and walking like an animal and the children jumping on top of, of him so the governor said what is this what is happening Umar is a smart very shrewd very smart he said oh tell me about yourself how do you behave at home how do you play with your children he said you want to know about me he said yes he said when I enter my house anyone standing will sit down Everything comes to stand still. Shh. One is a child is standing, sits down. Someone is lying, will also sit down. Anyone was having conversation? Stop. He said, Really? This how you are? This how you are with your children? He said, Yes. He said, You are not a governor anymore. You are not a governor anymore. If this is how you are with your children, that means with the people, the, with the subordinates, you are worse. You have no rahmah for your children. How I expect you to have rahmah for the rest? Unity among Muslims and brotherhood is really something we should work on it. And there are differences among Muslims. There are differences among Muslims. And scholars, rahimahumullah, classified the khilaf or difference into three categories. I want you to understand these three categories or three types of difference. One type of difference is haram. We should not have it among us Muslims. And that is to disagree and differ upon the fundamentals. To disagree on the fundamentals, that is not accepted. Second type of difference is fard obligatory we should have difference how we should be different from the disbelievers Muslims should be different from the disbelievers what every Muslim says in the Salah Every Muslim says this. So, you should be different from the way of the disbelievers. So that type of difference is a must. The third type, which we should reflect on it, this type of difference is permissible, allowed to differ. And this is what we call difference in understanding and this is exactly what happens between the scholars 
You find the scholars, they differ with one another. And the scholars always give this example. That the Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahaba, لا يصلين أحدكم العصر إلا في بني قريضة You know in Medina there were three tribes of the Jews Three tribes بنو قينقاع بنو النظير بنو قريضة Three tribes Why did the Jews go to Medina? Simply because they read in the Torah That this is the time of a prophet will come And they were expecting him to be from among them that's why they used to say to the Arabs, this is a time of a prophet to come, we'll believe and follow him, and then we will wipe you out all. That's what they used to say to the Arabs. But to their surprise, he came from among the Arabs. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, that the Jews, they know Prophet Muhammad sallallahu very well. يَعْرِفُونَهُ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءُهُمْ they know him as they know their children. Will you make any mistake among your children? You know your children very well. So they know him very well. So that's why they migrated and they were waiting for him. And settled there. Anyhow, the Prophet ﷺ, he signed peace treaty with them. And then they broke the promise. So he decided to drive them out of Medina. So he said to the Sahaba, no one of you should pray Asr except in the locality, the dwellings, the colony of Banu Qurayza. That's what he said. So all the Sahaba, they heard this statement. Charge, go, and drive them out of Medina and pray Asr there. The Sahaba, they set out. But in the way, it Asr was due. In their way, the Asr was due. It's time for Asr. So they said, it's time for Salah. Some they said, no. He said, there we should pray Asr. The other said, no, it's time for Salah. I'm asking you now. Why did the Sahaba disagree now? Upon the Hadith or the understanding of the Hadith? Upon the Hadith itself or the understanding of the Hadith? The understanding of the Hadith. So one group said what Prophet Muhammad meant that we should not delay the Salah. What he meant that we should hurry up. We should hasten, go quickly. He didn't mean that if Asr comes that we should not pray. The other said no. He said there we will pray there. So we're divided into two groups, the Sahaba. One group they prayed the Asr, the rest they waited for them. Learn from this. They, all, they waited for them. They didn't say you guys are deviant. You are huh, diverting from the manhaj. They didn't say that. They didn't say, you are now making something against what the Prophet said. They waited for them. Because there is a mission they have to carry out. And the mission is to drive out their enemies. They waited. You know what time they reach? The dwellings of Banu Qurayza? They didn't pray Asr. They prayed Asr night, at night. Then. They reported this to the Prophet ﷺ. You know what the Prophet ﷺ said? He approved the understanding of both of them. He didn't blame those who prayed, and he didn't blame those who delayed the Salah. Why? Because there is a possibility to understand the Hadith in that way. Either you understand the meaning, you go by the context, or take it literally. Because of that probability, he approved the understanding of both of them. May Allah Azza wa Jal increase our knowledge in his deen. And may Allah Azza wa Jal unite our hearts upon the deen. And may Allah Azza wa Jal give guidance to all the Muslims. And may Allah guide those who seek the guidance. Amen. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are going to take one last question. Uh, and we are going to uh, wrap this session up. Assalamu alaikum. My question is what is your concept of obedience of elders? <laughs> Obedience of your parents is fard. You have to obey your, your parents as long as they don't ask you to do something haram. As long as they don't ask you something haram, you obey them. Yes. But parents should fear Allah. A man came to Umar ibn Khattab. And he said, you know, Amir al-Mu'mineen, my father wants my money. 
Every time he said, give me money, give me money, give me money. No, no, no. He came to the Prophet ﷺ. I'm sorry. The Prophet ﷺ said, Anta wa malik li abik. What are you talking? You and your money belong to your father. You and your money, you belong to your father. Don't you know that he's the one who brought you up? You forgot that? And now you're saying, oh, it is my money. I don't want to give him. Your father can come and take your wallet and take whatever he wants without asking your permission. But please, fathers, don't do that. Huh? But the parents should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and should always look for the happiness of their children. Because there is a sickness now among the young people. They don't listen to the parents anymore. For instance, if my parents comes to me, come to me and say, Son, we, want, we found a suitable wife for you. No, 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 I don't want. I have to choose by myself. Why, why, this is something came from other place. It's not in Islam. First of all, at least give it a second thought. Let me see the girl. Maybe I like her. No, 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 no. It has been prearranged by you. I don't accept it. So how do you want to marry? I have to see the girls and, you know, dating and stuff like that. Then we'll get married. That's not the case. So yes, in Islam, we have to obey our parents as long as they don't ask us to do something to displease Allah. Is this clear? Okay? Jazakumullah khair.